Hello and welcome back to another Sleepers preview. This time we're taking a look at uh, the Tulane Green, Green Wave heading to Norman to take on the Sooners. Uh, look, very interesting point for both of these teams. Uh, I think in the preseason, um, maybe not thought much of this one uh, with Tulane breaking a new head coach and Oklahoma looking to be pretty solid. But uh, a lot can happen uh, in two weeks uh, because the Green Wave... Just narrowly avoided taking out a uh, Power 4 opponent in Kansas State last week. Looking to try to get that win this time in Norman. Uh, Maxwell, so just, just entering this one, um, what 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 are your big concerns with Oklahoma, uh, you know, trying to be undefeated here, trying to get another big win and avoid getting spoiled? Uh, what, what what's, what's number one on your list to watch for here? Yeah, number one for me is their offense. And, you know, especially... Uh, you know, the passing game and I really, I'm really just the entire offense, honestly. Like, I think it's a little bit alarming that they were only able to put up 16 points. Uh, well, 14 points offensively, two points were from the defense on a safety. But, you know, just just two scores against um, a Houston team. Um, and Tulane is coming into this game you know, they lost to Kansas State, but it was a close game. So you got to feel confidence there. They, I think, like blew out their first, <laughs> their first opponent, you know, which was um, southeastern Louisiana. I want to say, I don't even know. It was like some directional school somewhere. But, <laughs> but you know, if you're Tulane, like th that's pretty good a pretty good way to start a season and you're going to Oklahoma and you, and you are coming up against a team that, that just looks like they really had a hard time moving the ball, um, you know, for various reasons against Houston. So for me, like that is the big red flag. And I will say specifically, like I'm a little bit worried about, um, I'm a little bit worried about what happens if Tulane has, too many chances to uh, possess the football. Um, their quarterback this year, um, you know, numbers looking pretty good. Look, he looks to be off to a good start. They got a, a really good transfer wide receiver from USC, um, a Mario Williams. Oklahoma fans will know, by the way, started out at OU. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. So, I mean, that is my my main concern is those this Oklahoma offense, especially coming off with a show last week against Houston. Yeah, I mean, no doubt. Um, definitely an issue there. Uh offensive well, offensively for Oklahoma, it's a total disaster right now. Um, a lot of folks are looking for answers. Uh the entire offense is in disarray. It starts with the offensive line, which is just injury riddled. Um Another big hit coming this week as well with the uh, announcement that Garrett Hatchett will miss the remainder of the season with a bice with bicep surgery. So the hits really just keep coming for the Sooners. Um, and look, I, I gotta say, this Tulane team, you know, their, their new head coach uh, Summerall, he is about defense. You know, that was the a core tenet of his teams at Troy, made them a tough, tough, tough team to beat. And you know, I, I think that's going to be uh, an issue here for the Sooners. Um, they gave Avery Johnson and those Kansas State Wildcats, you know, really a lot of hell for the majority of that, uh, for the majority of that game. Uh, K-State kind of came on hot at the end and, you know, really uh, without, you know, a 60 yard fumble return for a touchdown, it's an entirely different ball game. Um, so, you know, th this Tulane team is feisty. OU fans all know, how feisty that the green wave can be. They took uh, the 2021 Sooners to the brink uh, back then, albeit very, very different team uh, with Lincoln Riley, Caleb Williams back there. So uh, very, very different, but uh, I don't know. I, I think a lot of OU fans are definitely having a little bit of, um, you know, bad memories seeing the green wave roll back into Norman. Well, um, I, I, sorry, I'm sorry to cut you off there. I, I just want to say, I think before, I think I read somewhere that there's, do you got 10 or so players that were on that team um, in 2021? So I think it is a good thing that you have a good group of guys that remember that. So at least they, you know, although it's a new head coach and, and 
new players on the Tulane side, new quarterback, like that's you still got guys in the room that can say like, hey, look, we this team gave us a hard time a couple of years ago. Like, you know, let's make sure we lock in, especially after the way we played last week. So that's kind of that. I mean, at least you got that fed in, in your cap. Yeah, I, I think the wake up call from well, la- obviously last week not performing well against Houston um, is helpful to be awake for this one. Um, and not only like that, but having that, you know, kind of reference point, even though very different Tulane team, um, you know, it, and Tulane is, too, I mean, look, they've been around the block for a bit, obviously different program, you know, no, you know, no Willie Fritz, um, you know, no, no, no Pratt back there, you know, out there pounding the rock. So it's, it's, it's quite a bit of a two different Tulane team, but they're, the pedigree is still there. Um, and I will say, I, I think OU is going to have to rely on their strength of their defense here. Um, that's by far the best part of the program right now. Um, and look, if they can nullify guys like Makai Hughes, who has been an absolute just beast running the football, uh, he ran for 128 yards uh, last week out against K-State, uh, prevent the big plays and just be steady you know, give the, I think that will be, that will be huge. Um, but ultimately this game is going to come down to the offense. Uh, can OU just break out a couple more, you know, uh, just, just anything. Uh, last week was as abysmal as we've seen it in Norman a long time. So um, I don't know what are, who are some uh, players on OU's uh, offense that you really look to see kind of stand out and uh, you know, break out, so so to speak, to, uh, you know, get the suitors past the line here. Yeah, I mean, I, I think at first it starts with the quarterback, right? Like you want to see Jackson Arnold have a, have a better game. Um, you want to see him be able to – I mean, he only had the one interception, but you want him to see him to – you want to see him protect the football. You want to see him be a little bit more accurate. Um, you want to see him be able to make plays on third down. I think that that's really where it starts – I think the offensive line has to be better as well, make gaps for the running back, prevent um, you know, sacks. Uh you don't you don't want a team like Tulane to be able to come in and be confident because they made big plays on third down and they got stops. And you know, their your quarterback is struggling to make accurate throws and make and complete passes when it matters, right? So I, I think it starts with the quarterback. You definitely want help from the O-line. And, I mean, we can break down every piece of the Oklahoma's offense, but I think it starts up front. Yeah, I mean, no doubt. Um, the the O-line controls everything, you know, because if you look at how the scheme works, everything's really integrated through that inside zone. And if they can get just a little bit more space, a lot, a, a lot more running room, that unlocks the RPO, which is – just so massive for this offense. Um, there's been a lot of, well, you know, I, I think you saw Houston really sell out, uh, you know, stop, stop, stop the run, kind of screwed up the RPO as a whole, uh, led to a lot of really bad third and long positions. Uh, so I, I think giving Jackson Arnold better, more convertible, you know, third downs is so, so crucial. I think, um, I, I think keeping it very meat and pot- or just keeping it, how, how, how should I say this? Get get Jackson Arnold some easy wins early. Yeah. Get him comfortable. Get mm-hmm. him get him you know in a rhythm where he's rolling the ball down the field. No mm-hmm. need to do a reverse pass to Dion Burks and get you you know immediately down you know back six yards. Just just progress the ball down the field. Maybe see a little bit of action from tight end Jake Roberts or Bauer Sharp. Um, I don't know. I, I think that that will be key. Control the tempo. Get confident, get a couple couple solid drives together, and you know I think the offense you know can regain its form a bit because I I don't I think what we saw last week, you know I I truly don't believe this OU team is as a lot of people in the uh, Oklahoma radio sphere have been calling it uh, they're not Red Iowa I, I'm not willing to concede that just yet but what? you know a big a, a solid performance against Tulane will go a long way to helping yeah I, um, I just think. I think you did mention it though. Like you guys have the the Sooners have to have to get better on third down, like 19% third down efficiency through two games, even in the temple game. Right. I think we mentioned it in the recap. Like it was, that was a weird like stat that they couldn't convert third downs, even, even though they absolutely blew the doors off temple. But like, 
you know, you 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 were four for fourteen in the last game, and you know for the season you're five for twenty six. So on the other end, Tulane is like com- converting fifty two percent of their third downs. So like you have to be able to keep it simple, especially on on third down, especially or fourth down or whatever. Like and convert and keep drives going. Like sustain drives, stay on the field. Don't give this team a chance to hang around. Yeah. Uh, here's the stat for you, Maxwell. Jackson Arnold has more passing touchdowns than Oklahoma has uh, third down conversions. Yeah, that's crazy. This season. That is nuts. Yeah, uh, yeah. So last question before we get into best bets. What, what do you need to see out of this Oklahoma team? And is there anything you can see out of this Oklahoma team that w- would make you personally feel better about the Sooners' chances going into that primetime battle against Tennessee next week? Yeah, I mean – I, I don't want to necessarily mix the two um, segments here because I know we're going to talk about best bets, but um, I think covering, right? Like, and I know teams don't go into games like, okay, like here's the spread. Here's what we got. No, I, I understand that. But if I'm an Oklahoma fan, I feel good if the um, Sooners win by 14 or more points, their spread is 14 or 14 and a half. Um, so yeah, like, be don't just get a win like get a win and get a and get a convincing one and I'll, I'll even say this like if you can get a complete win which means all three phases special teams offense and defense all are great like that's what you want but I think right now given that the defense has played well through two games I'll I'll even go as far as to say even if the defense doesn't play their best give me a good offensive game because we <laughs> we haven't really uh, you know, we need to see that, you know, if you're going to be confident about next week. So, um, yeah, that, that would be my, that would, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I think just a solid performance. If you can surprise us all and have just, you know, like, a, like a stellar win against a team that we think is going to be pretty damn good in Tulane. I, I think that would help calm down a lot of folks and you know, look, it's college football. Things can change a lot week to week. OU is a, a prime example of that. Look at Tulane and then, you know, Houston the next week. If you flip it around again, maybe folks will start to get to feel comfortable. Um, but let's move into best bets. Uh, the line uh, is Oklahoma minus 14. Um, don't have the total in front of me right now. Um, uh, it's, uh, 47 and a half, 47 and a half for the total. Um, Maxwell, what are, what are we feeling on this? Cause I think there are a lot of folks down here in the sooner state, uh, who would just be happy with OU scoring 14 more than 14 at this point. <laughs> yeah. So this is such a good, such an interesting question. I think this is a like strength on strength sort of game, meaning like Tulane's offense looks really good. Oklahoma's defense looks really good. Oklahoma knows they have to step their game up. Tulane is feeling pretty good about playing Kansas State close. I think it's hard to go on the road after coming off of a close loss and to do it again, especially in the circumstance that Oklahoma almost got. Like what happened to Notre Dame almost happened to Oklahoma. So I'm going to keep it very simple, and I'm going to say that Oklahoma does cover the 14 points. I think mentality-wise, like almost getting beat is enough of a wake-up call to, all right, you, we know the defense is good. They can, we, we can stop a, what um, what Tulane does best. All we have to do is put a good, decent offensive game together. And even if it's not high scoring, like maybe even – maybe a better bet even than this might take be taking the under a 47 and a half, but I'm going to, I'm going to say the spread is, is my best bet just because I think Oklahoma, if, if I, if they're the team that we think they can be Bobby, I think they cover um, by a couple scores, make it so that Tulane, um, like keep them in check, keep them, don't let them get close. Win the game convincingly you're at home and move on to the next game and, and get ready you ready for that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's, I think that's a solid bet, but you know, frankly, I, I'm going to go with the under, uh, under 47 and a half here for my best bet. This Oklahoma team is absolutely defensive oriented. Um, 
last week, you know, for all of its faults, for all of that, the, 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 grumbling and complaining that is a defensive lockdown performance overall uh only touchdown really came on a really bad beat there but the remainder of the game the Sooners were locked down and you know flat out won the game for him with that uh incredible safety from Grayson Halton um uh, I think o- Oklahoma keeps I-, I could see a world where Tulane keeps us within 14 but I don't think it's going to be a very high scoring situation I I, I could see this one I could see it being like 21 14 at that. I, I, I don't know. Um, I think it's going to be an absolute slug fest. I think it goes under this. Um, so I, I'm going to go under on this ma- mainly because, you know, partially, I don't think, I don't think I have it in my heart to uh, fade the Sooners against Tulane at home. So uh, we're going to, we're going to roll with the under, <laughs> but I, I'm also not dumb enough or not, not dumb, not dumb, but I'm also, I also just am too pessimistic I'm too pessimistic to think that the suitors are going to cover 14 against Tulane. So, you know, that because it's, I I don't think it's a bad, a bad bet. I think it's, I think it's, I think the suitors will bounce back, but I'm also just trying to not, I don't know. It, it's going to be interesting. I, I don't know if I trust them yet. I, I'm not ready to be heard again, Maxwell. <laughs> hey, don't put yourself in that situation. You're good. <laughs> just give yourself, just, it's okay. I need, I need time. I need time. You know, I need, I need, I need time to mourn before Tennessee and Nico, uh, you know, <laughs> just rip my heart out in a week or so on national TV, but that's a different uh, pod for, a, you know, next week. So, <laughs> um, all right, Maxwell, that's all we have for the OU Tulane preview. Uh, you can check out all of our sleepers media previews uh, here on the channel from both Maxwell and I, and the rest of the crew till then though. See you next time. Football season is here. Money is out there to be had in the form of winning bets. And our friends at MyBookie want to make it easy for you to do just that. Yeah, and coming into football season, you're going to have games all weekend happening everywhere. And Gregory, where is the only place that Sleepers Media places all bets? I can tell you right now, since last February... February 1st, to be exact. My bookie is the only place that I have placed a sports bet. I love my bookie. They make it easy. They get you quick payouts. They have awesome promo offers. In fact, card, they've got one right now that football fans everywhere and listeners of this show are going to want to take advantage of. Yeah, using promo code sleepers, that's promo code sleepers. You can take advantage of a 50% instant deposit bonus right now. That's 50% instant deposit bonus up to $1,000 over at my bookie use promo code sleepers and happy betting home dogs aren't dogs they're wolves i'm trying to flip that into like sport like home sports books aren't books they're novels we'll work on it that didn't work go my bookie promo code sleepers